Historically, Washington State has been a heating community. With climate change and rising temperatures and heat domes, the temperatures get even hotter and stay hotter longer. In the previous year, we had, I believe, 120 people pass away from heat-related illnesses, and that's 120 too many. A historic heat wave is expected to bring some of the hottest temperatures we have ever seen. The heat could go from downright uncomfortable to potentially dangerous. Buying an AC unit for next summer could literally save your life. When LIHEAP was first introduced and first put in, we focused on heating. And that has continued to be our focus, even though the need for cooling assistance has increased significantly over the past couple of years. It wasn't until we received funding from President Biden's American Rescue Plan that we could even consider beginning a cooling program in Washington State. We received an additional $86 million in LIHEAP funds. The ARP funding, along with the guidance from the Office of Community Services on how we could use those funds, developing our very first cooling program. My team and myself got together what would be the best way to mitigate the heat stresses and what we came to was providing air conditioners, but they had to be portable. So they belong to the resident, and if they happen to move, they take them with them. It was making sure that we could impact the people that were seeing these additional heat stresses and didn't have the resources to address that. I moved from Minnesota about 12 years ago, and I had to leave a life that I'd had for so many years and it, would, it was all broken. So I came here with nothing. I was diagnosed with cancer. I couldn't work anymore. And then things just started to spiral and go downward. Financially, it's been hard. We had to um, file for bankruptcy and we had to sell our house. So that's when I had to start looking for things. I found HopeLink and through HopeLink, I got it connected with the Energy Assistance Program Hopelink is a subcontractor of LIHEAP funds. A lot of, of our clients do not speak English as their first language, so they need some help navigating services. Uh, we also serve a lot of seniors and people on fixed income. They make up the biggest chunk of our clients, and they're coming in for a variety of things, but uh, we're helping them stabilize. That, that's, that's my goal in the program taking care of some of those absolute essential expenses so that when other emergencies come up or um, as housing costs continue to rise in this region, the power's going to stay on, the water's going to stay on, and there isn't dangerous levels of heat. I saw data recently that ranked Seattle as one of the metropolitan areas in the United States with the least access to air conditioning. We have people that make less money, who live shorter lives, who are more impacted by heat, simply by where they live. Equity and disparity are something that we have been working on, not just at the Department of Commerce, but also at a federal level. Justice 40, which has been um, a big push from the current administration, is that 40% of our funding should go to historically disadvantaged communities. And we need to equalize the, um, the distribution of services to the areas that have historically not received it. Myself, my wife, we had one child, and my second child was born with special needs. My wife couldn't work, and so that became the focus of our life. With one person working, a three-person household, uh, we received light heap assistance. So when you're, when you're on the other side, you're terrified. It's scary. Realizing that it's about moving from crisis to crisis to crisis just to keep the kids fed or to keep the meds going or to make sure somebody has a place to sleep tonight. Those are the decisions that are being made. It's not about where should we eat tonight or what should I buy at the grocery store. It's should I go to the grocery store or should I turn the air conditioning? That's a decision people shouldn't have to make. I've been able to detach from those feelings that I had about myself, that I wasn't good enough or that I wasn't worthy enough. Because yes, I am educated. Yes, I have had great jobs. But none of that makes a bit of difference. It's all what's inside of me and how, how I live my life and how I give back. I am going to be an advocate 
in terms of uh, what these programs have done for me and what they can do for you. And you know, it's okay for us to ask for help because that's what it's there for.